Hey everyone, and welcome to today's YouTube video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be talking about how the recently concluded presidential and U.S. government election could have a major impact on college admissions in 2020 and beyond. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now, obviously, as I'm sure many of you know, unless you literally live inside of a rock somewhere, there was an election last week. I'm recording this on Monday, November 9th. And as of this time, according to CNN and many other sources, uh, it looks like Joe Biden is going to be the next president of the United States. Uh, additionally, depending on uh, the different races you're looking at, it appears as though the Democrats and Republicans are going to be very close in the Senate. It's going to come down likely to a runoff election in Georgia. Uh, but either way, you're not going to get Democratic control of the Senate. And there, it looks like Republicans have picked up a few seats in the House of Representatives. Now, obviously, this is very important to the country at large. And, and regardless of which way you voted or who you supported during the election, the results of this election actually have a pretty big impact on the college admissions process. So I want to talk a little bit about three ways in which the outcome of the past election is going to potentially change the college admissions process for years to come. All right. So uh, the first key change I want to talk about is around student loans and paying for college. Now, obviously, Joe Biden um, is a member of the Democratic Party, and the Democratic Party has a lot of plans to re both reduce the cost of college and to potentially uh, reduce the amount of student loan debt that's held by people who existing people who have, have borrowed money, as well as people who would borrow money in the future. Now, um, I've come over here to the Biden-Harris uh, website to just take a look at the key elements of Joe Biden's plan for education. But then I also want to talk about a little bit about which ones might be more possible or less possible depending on who wins control of the Senate and of the House of Representatives. Right. So the first big thing that Joe Biden wants to do is make public colleges and universities tuition-free for all families with income below $125,000. Right. Now, that's the, that's the first key pillar of his plan, right? He also wants to double the maximum value of Pell Grants, which is the big federal financial aid grant that's given out to students. Typically, the max value of a Pell Grant today is about $6,000 per year. So this would make the Pell Grant double in value to $12,000 per year. So that would be the sort of Pell Grant, um, you know, Essentially, the idea would be to increase the maximum value and then also give more people eligibility for the Pell Grants, uh, including people who are uh, dreamers. The last piece is around student loans. Um, so basically, Biden plans to more than have payments on undergraduate federal student loans, basically cut the percentage of income you have to pay back on your student loans from you know, 10 plus, sometimes 20 plus percent to 5% of your discretionary income, which is income minus taxes and essential spending like housing and food. This would make student loans much less expensive to, to manage and to pay off uh, each and every month. Now, obviously, many of you out there are, are high school students. You still haven't gotten to this point yet, but um, this would actually make student loans much more manageable if you already have borrowed money or if you borrow money in the future. And then the last piece is making lo student loans, basically forgiving student loans for anyone that goes into public service, basically if you go into government work or community service. And the way this would work is basically you get $10,000 of student debt relief for every year of service up to five years. So if you work for five years in the government or in a community organization, you would be eligible for up to $50,000 worth of student debt relief. Okay. Now, the caveat here, obviously, is this is what Joe Biden's sort of election platform says. Once he actually gets into office and has to work with whoever is in the House of Representatives or Congress, uh, as well as with the Senate, these may change. And, and unfortunately, despite the fact that I'm sure for many of you, these would be um, really, really positive changes, it, would, it might be difficult for some of these uh, sort of plans to pass through Congress and the Senate, especially if the Senate is held by Republicans. So in fact, pretty much all of these proposals require Republicans um, in the Senate or in the House to vote on and vote for these proposals. And so unfortunately, it's probably not likely that the Biden administration would be able to um, 
get these proposals passed unless they win control of the Senate in January's elections in Georgia, right? But there is one piece of his agenda that Joe Biden actually can do by himself, which is the student loan forgiveness. So the president can actually forgive up to $50,000 worth of student loan debts via an executive order. And that's actually an interesting one because obviously it's very popular in the Democratic Party. And there's a chance that since it's something he can do via an executive order, Joe Biden might actually pursue some amount of student loan debt relief. It might not be as much as $50,000 per student, but there could be some student debt relief. So that's one big change that comes with the Biden and Harris administration is that they're going to be a lot more aggressive and a lot more friendly, or at least try to be a lot more aggressive and friendly in terms of reducing the cost of college. So that's the first that's the first way in which the 2020 election uh, is likely to impact college admissions, right? The cost of college yeah, they're going to try and do, do some things to bring down the cost of college. How much they're going to be able to do depends on whether or not the Democratic Party is able to take over the Senate and the House of Representatives. So that's the first way. The second area where a Biden and Harris administration is going to be a lot different in terms of education is in the treatment of international students, right? So one of the things that has happened during the coronavirus pandemic is that the Trump administration has either blocked or canceled visas for a lot of international students. It's been very hard for international students to get visas for uh, colleges, and that has bled over into this fall's admissions process, right? Fewer international students are applying to attend college in the United States because of all these visa issues. So um, you are seeing colleges have to shift more of their acceptances and more of their class towards domestic students. Once a Biden administration comes back in, they're likely to reverse that policy. They're likely to become more friendly towards immigration. And again, that's one of those things that they, as a presidential administration, could do even without any sort of cooperation from Congress or the Senate. So it's actually pretty likely that the Biden administration is going to be much more friendly to international students, which means that next year's admissions for the 2021-2022 cycle and beyond are probably going to be a lot more competitive again for international students. And even during this cycle, you might see more international students apply to U.S. colleges in the next month and a half or so because they're much more likely to get visas with a Joe Biden administration when they start next fall. So another big change to college admissions because of the election is that there's going to be more international students coming back to U.S. colleges and universities. So that's that's the second big change. The third big change that uh, is likely to occur due to this election uh, is potentially some difficulties uh, and a reduction or a change in how race is used in college admissions. So obviously the use of race and ethnicity in college admissions is very controversial, right? It's been the subject of many lawsuits. It's been the subject of a lot of press and media on both sides of the issue. Whether it's formal affirmative action programs like they have in many states, such as Texas um, or New Jersey or wherever, or it's the informal use of race in the admissions process at schools like Harvard or Yale or UNC Chapel Hill, again, all of which has seen lawsuits, it's seen sort of uh, Department of Justice actions, etc. Now, there's two interesting changes that happen as a result of this um, sort of change in government due to the election. The first is that in California specifically, there was a proposition on the ballot for voters that would have allowed them to reinstate the use of affirmative action. Back in the 1990s, California voters actually voted to ban the use of race in college admissions uh, at California public colleges. So you'll notice that the demographics of California public colleges are very different than the demographics of public colleges in a lot of other states, right? Um, you know, again, regardless of whether you're for or against this, California has had had a very different system over the past two decades in terms of how it ran college admissions. There was much less use of race in the admissions process. Um, You know, it wasn't stamped out entirely, but it was done in sort of very hidden and kind of of behind the scenes ways. And um, there was a much different treatment uh, of affirmative action policies in California. Now, this election 
California had an initiative on the ballot, which basically would have allowed the state's public colleges to reverse that ban. Basically, they could start using affirmative action again. They could start using race in the admissions process again. But California's voters voted against that initiative. So if you're planning on applying to a any school in the state of California, uh, but particularly a public college in the state of California, there's going to be no change to the way the admissions process has worked relative to what it previously ha had, right? Um, there is not going to be as much of a use of race in the admissions process by California public colleges. More broadly, when you look at the national level, right, one of the key results in this election is actually the Senate, right? Because uh, either Republicans are going to hold on to the Senate, or maybe Democrats will have a very, very small majority in the Senate. And the reason this is impactful is obviously before the election, there was a lot of discussion around the Supreme Court. Right now, there's a 6-3 majority for conservative justices on the Supreme Court, including three that were nominated by Donald Trump. And uh, you know, obviously, that 6-3 number came about due to the unfortunate and tragic passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg right before the election, and then the addition of Amy Coney Barrett to the court. And so now there's six conservative justices and three liberal ones, right? Now, the reason this is important for college admissions is over the next couple of years, a bunch of different lawsuits that have come up related to the use of race in, col in college admissions are going to come before the Supreme Court, right? So the famous Harvard lawsuit, Harvard won the initial round of their lawsuit a couple years ago, but the Asian American lawsuit against Harvard is likely going to come up before the Supreme Court. And if the court is a 6-3 conservative court, it is pretty potentially likely, uh, many, actually many legal analysts think it is likely that they will rule against Harvard and strike down the use of race in the admissions process at these colleges. Now, had the Democrats won control of the Senate, right, they had had discussions about adding additional justices to the court. So they might have kind of pushed back um, and added additional justices to the Supreme Court and, you know, created a different ideological balance on the court, which, you know, then might have caused that the Supreme Court to rule differently. But because of the way the election turned out and the fact that the Republicans either retained control of the Senate or came very close to it, it's now more likely that affirmative action will be struck down because there's no way for Democrats to make adjustments to the court. So the sort of impact of, of race on the admissions process and the ways in which race are used in the admissions process could change pretty remarkably over the next couple of years due to the 2020 election. And regardless of who you voted for, this is going to have a very, very big impact on colleges and on the college admissions process. So with that, folks, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up our video for today. Uh, as always, I want to thank you all for, for spending, you know, 10 to 15, sometimes 20 minutes with me as I talk about different topics and, and, and the impact that various things have on college admissions. And we've got more great content coming for you each and every day. We're putting out two videos per day between now and the end of the admission cycle. And uh, if you haven't already, I, and I know the majority of you have not because we get statistics on this. If you haven't already, definitely hit the like button below um, to sort of give us a little thumbs up for, for the time we put into these videos. Uh, definitely hit the subscribe button. The majority of you watching these videos are not subscribed, and I take that as a personal insult, so please you know, hit, that, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to make sure you get notifications every time we put up a new video or we go live. Um, we're going to be doing some live streams here on YouTube over the next few months. So definitely make sure you do all of that, and I'm going to wrap things up there. I'll catch you all later.